Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. Today we'll be discussing some of the rather lesser known effects of one of the most famous potions in the Harry Potter series, Polyjuice Potion. Making its first appearance in the Chamber of Secrets, the second installment in the novels and films, Polyjuice Potion is one of those wacky Wizarding World staples that shows up several times over the course of Harry Potter's adventures at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. And beyond, you know, like Portkeys, Centaurs, and Fred and George's practical jokes. But unlike any of those examples, Polyjuice Potion is a rather complex bit of magic that can typically only be brewed by an experienced witch or wizard. Now I say typically because, as many of you well know, Miss Hermione Granger was able to create this concoction in the toilets of Hogwarts at the mere age of 12, less than two years into her magical education. But in any case, complex magic it is. For those of you who may be less familiar or require a bit of a reminder, Polyjuice Potion is a brew created by a witch or wizard who wishes to take on the appearance of someone else. It's made by adding a bit of bodily material belonging to the person they'd like to impersonate to the potion. This can be anything from a strand of the person's hair to one of their toenail clippings, which is then added to a rather extensive list of ingredients that, according to JK Rowling, includes lacewing flies, the first part of the name suggested an intertwining or binding together of two identities, leeches to suck out the essence of one and into the other, horn of a bicorn, the idea of duality, knockgrass, another hint of being tied to another person, fluxweed, the mutability of the body as it changed into another, and boomslang skin, a shedded outer body and a new inner. As we see throughout Harry Potter, once this complicated potion has been brewed, it's ready to be drunk in order to turn the consumer into the likeness of someone else entirely. Of course, in the series, each and every time we witness someone pluck a bit of DNA from a person, brew the polyjuice potion, and then drink the potion, all parties were, well, alive. So the question of today is, what happens if you polyjuice a dead person? Now, in my opinion, you can interpret this question in one of two ways. The first being, could a witch or wizard use material from a deceased individual in a batch of Polyjuice Potion, drink that brew, and then successfully turn into that dead person? The second way to interpret this question is, could you give a dead person Polyjuice Potion and change their appearance even though they are no longer alive? Because I obviously enjoy speculating on all things Harry Potter, and especially all things Harry Potter theory. I will of course be providing answers to both of these questions. Now, let's dive in, shall we? Question 1. Can you use Polyjuice Potion to turn into a dead person? Well, for the most part, there would really be no need for anyone to have the ability to transform into someone who is known to be dead. I suppose you could make the argument that it would be nifty in the instance that a witch or wizard hoped to perform some sort of haunting on another individual. Presumably though, if this was possible, the wizarding world as a whole would be well aware of the possibility that this could happen meaning that if a dead person suddenly appeared in the flesh, it would be pretty obvious that that person was not the dead person. That said, the ability to haunt a muggle would be quite effective. However, considering this specific scenario is never even remotely hinted at throughout the series, it seems rather unlikely that it's a common practice. Then, of course, there's the fact that it seems, well, not possible. One can draw this conclusion from the very detailed confession given by Barty Crouch Jr., after he is caught having impersonated Professor Mad-Eye Moody throughout Harry Potter's entire fourth year at Hogwarts. Under the influence of Veritas Serum, the Wizarding World's powerful truth serum, he explained to Professor Dumbledore, Wormtail and I did it. We had prepared the Polyjuice Potion beforehand. We journeyed to his house. Moody put up a struggle. There was a commotion. We managed to subdue him just in time. Forced him into a compartment of his own magical trunk. Took some of his hair and added it to the potion. I drank it. I became Moody's double. I kept him alive under the Imperius curse. I wanted to be able to question him, to find out about his past, learn his habits, so that I could fool even Dumbledore. I also need his hair to make the Polyjuice Potion. And while it may be possible that Barty Crouch Jr. kept Moody alive for convenience, perhaps he figured it'd be quite a bit dodgier to carry around Mad-Eye's decapitated head, the way he phrased his explanation about keeping Mad-Eye alive seems to indicate that the hair needed to be extracted from a human who was not dead. For if Barty Crouch Jr. and Wormtail had killed Mad-Eye and his body had no more life in it, it sounds like this would have impacted Barty Crouch Jr.'s ability to brew the potion. So in sparing Moody's life, 
Barty Crouch Jr. was able to continue to use Mad-Eye's bodily material to create the Polyjuice Potion that allowed him to impersonate the aura. There's also the fact that brewing Polyjuice Potion is an extremely complex practice that requires an incredible amount of skill. Considering this, it seems like mucking about with the material of a dead person could pose possible risks to the individual considering ingesting the potion. For what if consuming a Polyjuice Potion brew of someone who wasn't alive anymore reduce the drinker to the same deceased state. So even if it is possible to create Polyjuice Potion of someone who has died, it might actually be an incredibly dangerous thing to do. Would that person come back to life after it wore off, or would they have just accidentally killed themselves? In any case, the facts appear to stack up in a way that provides one definitive answer to this question. For considering we never learn of any instances in which a witch or wizard used Polyjuice Potion to become a dead person, and the idea that it may be fatal, all combined with Barty Crouch Jr.'s confession, it would seem that no, you cannot use Polyjuice Potion to turn into a dead person. Which brings us to the next interpretation of whether or not you can Polyjuice a dead person. Question 2. Can you give a dead person Polyjuice Potion? Similarly to my answer to our first question, I'm afraid I must be a bit of a Debbie Downer and admit right off the bat that no, I don't think you can give a dead person Polyjuice Potion. Once again, I'm not entirely sure what the purpose of this would be, why exactly one would want to change the appearance of someone who is, well, dead. Then there's also the fact that, just like with the first question, we simply never hear of this happening throughout the Harry Potter or other Wizarding World series. And if we move on to the more practical bit of answering this question, there's also the almost 100% chance that giving Polyjuice Potion to a dead person would not actually work. If we consider the fact that a dead person would be unable to drink the potion, it seems rather obvious that the logistics of this just aren't there. Even if you were to inject the potion right into their veins, since their blood would no longer be flowing, it seems entirely unlikely that the potion would be distributed throughout their system or absorbed into their cells. And with that, we've come to the end of today's video. What did you think? Do you think it's possible to polyjuice a dead person in either of the ways I've gone over in today's video? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, remember, it does not do to dwell on dreams and forget to live.